can't tell the difference between my waking life and dreams. The voice in your head. It devours you. Welcome back, everyone. This is going to be my Marvel Moon Knight trailer video with Oscar Isaac. There's a whole bunch of Easter eggs here. I'll explain what's going on because there's all kinds of big crossover and stuff that they're setting up with a darker Marvel Hearts of Darkness like Midnight Suns team up down the road. This also ties in with what we just saw in the Eternals post credit scene, so I'll give a spoiler warning when I start talking about that. But if you're brand new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to get all the videos. I will be doing videos for all the episodes when they get released, just like all the other Marvel Disney Plus series. I'll explain what's going on with that too, because it seems like Marvel has changed the order that all these shows are coming out in. But in the trailer, you hear Oscar Isaac as a couple different versions of Moon Knight's different personalities. A lot of people joke about him being Marvel's version of Batman just because of a lot of the tropes of the character, but he's quite different. He's very different from Batman. You probably noticed Oscar Isaac changing his accent a couple times in the trailer. That's to represent when he's changing between different personalities. Like he goes from this really weird, meek accent to full on Batman voice, really guttural, to represent when he switched to his full Moon Knight personality. I can't tell the difference between my waking life and dreams. The voice in your head, it devours you. That's what he means when he says, I can't tell the difference between my waking life and dreams. Now, he might be Mark Spector when he's speaking is that voice, or he might be the Jake Lockley persona, the millionaire philanthropist personality. There's really like three different main Moon Knight personalities, but there's actually a fourth more recently, and there's an Easter egg for that fourth personality later in the trailer when he's dressed in the white suit with the white gloves. And that is not the Moon Knight costume. That's a different costume from his full-blown superhero costume that you see in a different part of the trailer. But when he's speaking those lines, you see him inside this Egyptian museum exhibit staring at multiple reflections as if he's seeing the different personalities all in the glass. The main alternate versions are Mark Spector Moon Knight, Stephen Grant, and Jake Lockley. Stephen Grant is like the millionaire philanthropist personality, like when Bruce Wayne in Batman movies is out pretending to be a socialite, just hanging out with celebrities and models. Are you the prima, prima ballerina for the Moscow Ballet? Jake Lockley is sort of like the Matches Malone personality. He's a cab driver, he's way more violent, and he has a much thicker New York accent. Moon Knight uses his personality as a sort of information gatherer, just because people are much more likely to reveal things to Jake Lockley than they are to someone dressed like Moon Knight or dressed like Stephen Grant, dressed like a millionaire. One of the big differences between him and Batman, though, is that Batman always knows when he's Batman or Bruce Wayne. Like, he knows when he's pretending to be Bruce Wayne. No, this is an act Mark Spector Moon Knight does not know the difference. He doesn't know who the main version of his personality is. He doesn't know if Moon Knight is the main version of himself. He doesn't know if Mark Spector is. He doesn't know if Jake Lockley or Stephen Grant is the main version. Like you see him standing here in the middle of the street without his costume on, just dressed like a normal person. And it seems like he's just beaten the crap out of a bunch of criminals. And he kind of blinks as if he's changed between personalities and doesn't realize what just happened. Like, wait a minute, what happened to all these people? Why are they lying on the ground? The gold statue in the case that he's also staring at here in this exhibit is of Amun-Ra, Khonshu's father. So the whole idea is that Mark Spector, Moon Knight, gets his powers from Khonshu, the moon god, except Khonshu really isn't the moon god. He's a bit of a trickster in that way. So the pantheon of gods that Khonshu and his family come from present themselves as if they're the regular Egyptian pantheon, but really they're secretly just the elder gods. It's the same group of gods that Cthone comes from, the person who wrote the Darkhold. They're much, much older than the Egyptian pantheon, and when Earth's cultures just rose up, eventually they just sort of inserted themselves into Egyptian culture and presented themselves to the ancient Egyptians as their gods. So even though Khonshu and his family are pretending to be Egyptian gods, all their relationships within their pantheon are true. Like Khonshu was born to two different god parents. He gives Mark Spector the opportunity to become his avatar on Earth and gives him all his powers. But the idea is Khonshu is constantly talking to him in his head. That's what he means when he says later in the trailer, the voice in your head, it devours you. The voice in your head. devours you. 
it's the voice of Khonshu that's kind of devouring him. So it's kind of a sinister connotation to it. Like Khonshu does give him all these powers and pretend to be a noble god. Like here, you can be a superhero. But Khonshu is a very selfish, very fickle god. He will always do what is in the best interests of Khonshu. And he'll just order Mark Spector to go around and help him accomplish all these goals. But while all that's happening, Mark Spector does actively try to use his powers for the betterment of society. Like, he does try to be a superhero. He's just a very, very violent, very crazy superhero. But the whole idea is that Khonshu has this rivalry with his father, Amun-Ra, and I think that Ethan Hawke, who's playing the main villain of the series, that's right, Ethan Hawke is going to be the main villain of Moon Knight. I believe he's going to be playing the Sun King, who's sort of the Moon Knight-style avatar of Khonshu's father. So you have two different gods that are going to war with each other, and their avatars going to war with each other. Oscar Isaac driving all of his powers from the moon, and Ethan Hawke may be playing the Sun King, driving all of his powers from the sun. The reason why I think that's the case is because Ethan Hawke said he based his character on a famous cult leader in real life, and in the comics, Sun King forms his own cult while he's plotting against Moon Knight. His character is obsessed with Moon Knight and then approaches Amun-Ra and offers to become his avatar. And the official synopsis for Moon Knight just reads, A new globe-trotting action-adventure series featuring a complex vigilante who suffers from dissociative identity disorder. The multiple identities who live inside him find themselves thrust into a deadly war of the gods against the backdrop of modern and ancient Egypt. That's what I meant when I said it's basically like a war of the gods, Khonshu going to war with his father, Amun-Ra, the moon god going to war with the sun god, and then the two avatars kind of warring with each other. When Oscar Isaac puts his hands on the glass here, he's wearing this white suit, like a white tie business suit with white gloves. This is actually an Easter egg for the Mr. Knight persona, which is like the fourth persona. It's a little bit different from the regular version of Moon Knight. It's like a detective offshoot of his regular Moon Knight personality, where he works with the local police solving cases for them. It's sort of like a world's greatest detective Batman spin on the Moon Knight persona. When he's huddled down, biting his fingers here in front of this Egyptian statue, I think this might be the statue of Khonshu himself. When he's inside this storage facility, he seems like he's Mark Spector right now, but he could be Jake Lockley, he could be Stephen Grant. Notice the shirt he's wearing is Moon Knight color theme with the white and black pattern, and this look on his face of utter disbelief or fear makes it seem like he's seeing a vision of Khonshu speaking directly to him. And then his voice changes to his Moon Knight voice, like full-on Batman voice, deep and guttural. As you see him in the full-blown Moon Knight costume, beating the crap out of some criminals, and then running across the night landscape, then you see a much clearer scene of him jumping across the rooftops using his powers against the moonlit night sky. And because Khonshu is the moon god, or at least he's pretending to be the moon god, Moon Knight's powers are tied to the phases of the moon. So he's most powerful during a full moon or during like a full solar eclipse, and he's weakest during a new moon when it's barely visible in the night sky. I know there's all kinds of questions about gods in the Marvel Universe, like how powerful is Khonshu compared to the Asgardian pantheon like Odin, Thor, those gods? They'll explore this concept of gods in the Marvel Universe way more during Thor, Love and Thunder, because Gore the God Butcher will basically be going on a campaign around the universe to kill every single god. But we'll be getting all the Moon Knight episodes way before that. You probably heard about all the Blade crossover rumors, Werewolf by Night crossover rumors, and now after the Eternals, Kit Harington Black Knight crossovers. There have been rumors that they're going to introduce the Blade character legit like you'll actually see him on screen during the Moon Knight series at some point, but I don't know if he's going to be a big character or it'll just be a quick cameo scene in the finale. Quick spoiler warning for the Eternals movie if you have not seen it yet because we need to talk about the post credit scene. During the Eternals post credit scene, they set up Kit Harington's character as the next Black Knight. He's basically in his uncle's mansion getting ready to take up the Ebony Blade and actually become the Black Knight. When off screen, you hear a voice say, are you sure you're ready for that, Dane Whitman? And it's Mahershala Ali's Blade character. The reason why they would put Blade in a post credit scene like this, like why they would connect him to Black Knight, is probably because we're going to see Black Knight crossing over with Blade, either in the Blade movie or some other upcoming project. But we didn't actually see him on screen, he just off screen talking to Dane Whitman. So the idea is that we might see him on screen for the first time during the Moon Knight series. If you're not familiar with Werewolf by Night, because there's been all this talk about him showing up in the series as well too, Marvel just announced that they're doing a Halloween special next year on Disney Plus for Werewolf by Night. I think it'll be like a single episode maybe, or maybe like two hours or something like that. Werewolf by Night was just a big crossover character with Moon Knight inside the classic comics. But for those of you that wanted a Midnight Suns team up or a Darker Marvel team up, it seems like that's what they're doing with a lot of these characters through the Moon Knight series. 
Picture Doctor Strange doing a version of that Nick Fury Iron Man post credit scene setting up the Avengers. I'm putting together a team, a dark team. We just found out the next Spider-Man No Way Home trailer is coming out next week. Of course, I'll do a video for it. Make sure you have alerts enabled for my channel so you don't miss that. Congratulations, Renegade, with a whole bunch of threes. You're the giveaway winner from my last big Marvel video. Please email me on the about page of my channel so I can get your contact details. Everyone click here for my Marvel She-Hulk trailer and Easter eggs, and click here for my new Spider-Man No Way Home, Tobey Maguire, and Andrew Garfield video. Thank you so much for watching. Everyone stay safe, and I'll see you guys in the next one.